We, as welders, do not make pretty welds. What we do is make structurally sound welds that just happen to look good. This is attempt number three of making this video. Just because I'm not really sure exactly how I want to go about this. It's a tough one. Now, I just looked at a whole bunch of emails that I got, and I don't always get to my emails every single day. I mean, we get hundreds of them every single week. You know, it's hard to get through all that, you know, between running the business and everything else like that. So, you know, I notice a trend every single time welders start selling. And uh, usually it's, I just got my welder, I put some settings in, and it welds like crap. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> Well, the, the harsh reality that I feel that a lot of you guys need to know and understand is that there is nothing you can put into that machine right now, having never done it, that is going to make you weld. Nothing. Settings are for MIG welders. Settings are for plasma cutters. Settings are for dishwashers. Settings are for stoves or, you know, ovens or, you know, stuff that you have around the house. Settings are for cameras. Settings are for everything else but TIG welding or anything that is a skill-based career or, or field for that matter. Let me try to make this a little bit simplified or tell you how silly it sounds to me when people are asked for settings. Imagine that you're flying. You're, you're on an airplane, pilot comes down, a little rough landing, whatever the case is, but at the end of the day, he nails it, right? Do you get off the airplane and, you know, and ask the pilot what his settings were to successfully land it? Or even better still, I love hockey, right? When I see my favorite player score a goal, I don't immediately run down to the ice or send him an email or anything else like that that asked him what his settings were. It was skill. A lot of this is all based on skill. So when you ask about your TIG welding settings, realize that they're not going to do a thing. Literally nothing. Not, not, not a thing. <laughs> there is nothing you can put into that machine that's going to make you weld. What will make you weld is time, practice, and understanding. Now, this is where we get into these emails. I do receive feedback and constructive criticism very well, and a lot of that, uh, I can say, helped create TFS or to bring it where it was or where it has been. But my approach to everything has always been a no BS, straight up, this is exactly how it works. And in that, you know that I've probably left out some details, but it never really seemed to matter. Details like where my foot pedal is positioned, or details of how much amperage is coming out of that machine while I'm welding. But why would I leave information about this out? Well, there's two reasons. Aside from the very simple things that you can understand about this, like when you're making a weld, you're not looking at the machine. So what does it matter how much amps are coming out of that machine? You will not be able to sit there and be like, well, that's exactly 64 amps. It, it, it doesn't work that way. I mean, you're not gonna know how many amps are coming out of it. So I'm not gonna show how many amps are coming out of my machine. I'll tell you where I initially set it, and then people will ask, well, where's the foot pedal positioned? And I don't know where the foot pedal is positioned. I just know that when I step on it, something happens in front of me. And that's all I'm using. What I'm effectively doing is taking what's in front of me and starting a feedback loop that controls at a bare minimum nine different things in my body that have to work in unison to make that one weld. That's all I'm doing. You're staring at what's in front of you because what's in front of you is a direct result of what you are doing with that machine. The machine is not making a weld. For example, let me just try to put this into perspective for you. If you're watching a piece of aluminum run away and fall apart and get all oxidized and just destroy itself, it's because you told it to do that. It's literally that simple. The reason, the actual definition of why I don't show half of these things that you guys are asking for, it's because it boils down to a very, very simple principle here. And that is we, as welders, do not make pretty welds. We do not chase pretty welds. We do not intentionally stack dimes you know, because they look good. What we do is make structurally sound welds that just happen to look good. That's it. And that takes time, that takes practice, that takes a skill that's developed, right? You have to get in there and do it. So 
If I was to put all of this stuff out there on screen or with all that information, which I know that there's a lot of other YouTubers that do that too, but or that actually do that, but the reason why I don't is because I don't want you guys to mimic what I do. Because if you just tried to mimic what I do, you would be chasing pretty welds. And that's not going to advance your skill. That's going to stick you right in the mud and realize that over the course of time, you're just going to sink. You're not going to advance. So if I leave out a lot of this information, it's going to help you. So what you have to do is pay attention to what's in front of you. Your initial settings, if you will, like one amp per thousandth of an inch based on material thickness or 40 amps per millimeter. You know, your gas flow settings, two times the cup diameter, not using too big of a cup, not too small of a cup, you know, all that stuff that we put together here. These are your basic settings. This is your, your ground zero of where you should be working or where you should be operating. The rest is looking at what's in front of you and controlling it. Once you realize you're in control, of that machine you are set now a little bit of a shameless plug I hope you stick around with this because it might just bring all this back full circle we offer classes six days a week we do hands-on training like a one-on-one -on -one type of thing I don't know if you can hear it in my microphone but we have a class going on right now in the shop we do this six days a week so there's always a flight to Vegas and we're literally a block away from the strip so get a flight get a hotel get something cheap whatever the case is there's no reason not to come to vegas i mean it's just geez i mean it's so simple right but if that's not your thing go to a community college take a votech class take any one of those things just do something to get yourself out there and get some machine time on there with some sort of formal instruction now i'm not gonna lie i've heard every horror story of so many different schools out there not offering what people want or anything else like that and that's why tfs exists with the classes that we do the second thing that we're starting off here is Weld With Me Live, the new series that is a completely free live stream. Now it's free that you can use all the metal you want or whatever the case is and it doesn't cost you anything other than your normal wireless or internet bill or whatever the case is to watch the stream. But the whole point of it is we're offering training completely live. We use Weld Metals Online to create a standard of what we're training with. So when I say grab a 1 16th coupon and a 1 8th coupon and some 1 16th filler and we're going to weld those two together and here's how to do it, you can do the exact same thing in your house, right? Or wherever you're at, right? So Weld With Me Live is coming up. It's kind of experimental at this point. We're going to see how it goes. But there's, you know, there's so many other things that you can do. Try not to chase a weld. Try to just make a weld and if it happens to look good, fantastic that's all you need but this is the info that you guys really really need to hear and in my style there's just no way to sugarcoat this that's just all there is to it